Good morning, listeners, and welcome back to the Internet Marketing and Business Solutions Radio Show with Ron Coleman of RCS Online Solutions, where we help business owners and entrepreneurs much like you achieve even greater success by attracting, converting, and retaining your ideal customers and clients using various Internet marketing techniques and methods. What we do with this show is we have two different formats that we do, and depending upon uh, the week, it it can change. One format is we will bring on subject matter experts, and uh, they will talk about how they overcame some of their entrepreneurial beginnings and achieved their success. Uh, And hopefully in hearing that, you will also uh, be able to navigate through some of those hurdles without having to actually go through them. And then the other part is, uh, you know, if we don't have a guest on that week, I'll just give away some tips. Some will be informational, some will be instructional. Uh, So this week, what we're going to do is both sections today, there might be two or three sections depending upon the time, uh, but it's all going to be about website conversion and website design today, okay? So uh, it's a very important part of your business. It is your face to the world. So we're going to focus today on website conversion, and then I'm going to give you some um, tips in the next section on how to uh, actually create your design if you don't have a design right now that, uh, you know, enhances your ability to get conversion. So, but first I want to talk about what is a website conversion. A lot of people have different ideas. Some people think it's a, a straight sale, right? Somebody hits your website out of the blue, and um, all of a sudden, you know, they're hiring you. That's one form of a conversion, and I guess at the end of the day, it's probably the best form of a conversion. But let's just talk about what a website conversion is in its truest sense, okay? A website conversion occurs when a visitor to your website completes a desired action. That's any action, such as signing up for a newsletter, a social media share, filling out a form, or making a purchase. The percentage of visitors that convert is called your conversion rate. So today in this section, I'm going to give you a bunch of different little blurbs about these so you can start to have an idea of you know what, what these uh, truly are. And um, then we'll talk about how to construct your website or modify your website or, or increase these. So what is a good website conversion rate? Across industries, uh, the average landing page conversion rate was about 2.35%, yet the top 25% are converting at 5.31% or higher. Ideally, you want to break into the top 10% of those landing pages with conversion rates of 11.45% or higher. And I got that little blurb from... uh, from November 2009, uh, November 9th, 2018. So those are pretty accurate and up-to-date statistics, right? So unfortunately, most websites are, are really only converting at, you know, 2 or 3%, and then you have some, you know, the, the higher converting websites are converting at like 5%. But again, it's like one of the first times somebody is coming to contact with you, Right. Uh, so, but if they're taking an action, it then starts the process of you building that rapport. So it's like if you, it's almost like dating, right? You know, if you just walk into a room, you know, chances are you're not going to just, you know, walk up to somebody and then get married, right? You, you, you meet them, you decide if there's chemistry, if you like each other, then you go out to lunch and then maybe a dinner or whatever the case may be. It's a process. So, um, you know, it's unrealistic to think that, Every single person who lands on your website is actually going to become a client that day, okay? So um, that's what a a good conversion rate is, is uh, roughly 11 11%, we'll say 12%. Um, And again, that could be as simply as just signing up for your newsletter. But uh, uh, so we're going to talk about how do you calculate all right, there's different things here that I can give you. So um, how do you calculate a conversion rate? Conversion rates are calculated by simply taking the number of conversions and dividing that by the number of total 
clicks that can be tracked to a conversion during the same time period. So if you had a hundred people land on your website and five of them took some action, that action could be simply signing up for a newsletter. It could be filling out a contact form. If they took any action, that is called a conversion. Okay. So if you had five out of a hundred, that would be 5%. So it's, it's not too hard to actually figure out what your conversion rate is. And uh, most websites have Google Analytics installed on them right you can just you can get that it's free from google and um, you can then look to see what your total uh, number of hits that are coming to your website is and then you can also if in there you can also go in and see where they're coming from and i, I don't want to get distracted i want to kind of keep talking about the conversion maybe one episode i'll do just on google analytics but so um let me look. I might just start talking about how do you you can optimize your website for conversions, all right? But what's a good conversion rate for social media compared to your website? Just to compare them. While it can differ from business to business, a successful conversion rate for social media advertising campaign is largely accepted uh, to range anywhere between 2 and 5%, meaning it's almost the same. So if a person who clicks on your ad and uh, arrives at your website website should perform the, the desired action that you want them to take. So, you know, it's kind of like when you're, when you're doing pay-per-click and you're doing these things, uh, I'm going to use a term like a funnel, but it's, it's the top end. It's, it's what they see first, right? You're paying for that ad, that banner, that you know, the question, whatever it is, they see the question, they see the ad, then they click that, right? Or they fill out a form and it takes them to somewhere else. That's, you know, a very brief, you know, um, level, of, you know, a very brief uh, explanation of what a funnel is. But when that's the process. So if you're putting up on social media, you're putting up an ad, Somebody clicks on it, and it takes them to your website, right? So that's actually, that's a conversion from for your ad. Now, when they get to your website, are they taking some desired uh, action that you want? If your ad was on point, and it's what interests them, you know, it's like an attraction marketing device. I've done um, segments on that, and, and I've talked about that. But so if, if your ad is on point or whatever it was, you know, let's say you, you're putting up three tips before you hire three things you need to know before you hire a plumber, you know, four, four ways to save money with real estate agents or whatever it is. So if that interests somebody and they click on that, that top end, that interests them, and then it takes them somewhere, that's an actual conversion on the ad. Now, if they get to the second location, which could be your website, uh, and they don't, then it would not be a conversion, uh, at that location. Right. So, um, uh, your conversion rate is the percentage of visitors to your website that complete a desired goal or conversion out of the number of visitors. So we've basically already talked about that, right? Um, I'm trying to see here about different things here. Uh, what is SEO conversion? Since we're talking about conversions rate, a conversion rate is measured by the number of potential visitors performing the desired action. So that seems to me to be pretty clear. So what I want to do now is I'm going to just give you some tips on how to improve your conversion rate, okay? How does that sound to you? From, I'm going to give you, let's give you eight right now uh, to uh, in, increase your conversion rate. And then in the next section, I'll talk to you about uh, how to actually design your website itself to increase, right? Uh, so, so number one, and, and these are just, tips, okay? You know, I say number one, but it could be a, uh, you know, there's no specific order here, okay? So in, include as few fields as possible. When, when you have, when customers and clients or potential customers and clients get to your website, if, if they have, you know, let's say the form itself, we're talking about your conversion rate. So let's say your form says first, your form rather says first name, last name, 
uh, you know, email address, phone number, street address, zip code, you know, that's going to decrease your uh, conversion rate. You want to have it as few fields as possible, meaning maybe name, email address. That don't, like just two would be huge, but I would also start collecting people's uh, phone numbers because text messaging is huge. You know, it's it has an open rate of like ninety percent, much better than emails uh, have right now. So I would start, you know, but I would keep it at that. You know, maybe just those three. Um, you know, first name, last name, or just name and uh, email address and uh, phone number. And, and, and don't make them mandatory either. You know, if somebody doesn't want to give you a phone number, but they give you their email address, take it. You know, because, you, again, you don't know where it's going to go. So another way, number two, will say tip two, that you can increase a uh, website's conversion is to add a guarantee. You know, if, if you guarantee something, you know, it's less likely that, you know, people, because then it's going to seem like it's risk-free, right? They get their money back or, like in my case, excuse me, in my case, I have 100 people. We have a SEO service where we'll get people ranked on the first page of Google before they pay us. So to me, that's, you know, that's a guarantee, right? You know, you don't even pay us until after we get you ranked. So that can increase because you're a lot, you're taking away a person's fear and you're taking away their resistance to um, take that course of action that you want them to take. Okay. And number three would be use tangible action words. You want to use words that are tangible that that tell people almost tell them what to do. You know, don't ask them. You know, please submit here. No, tell them submit your info here. Um, you want to use actionable words. Uh, number four is you could use a testimonial right by the right by the form that you want them to fill out or whatever action is you want them to take. Maybe have one or two short because people don't have time to read a book, right? You know, on your page, right? Maybe one or two sentences, but a, a short testimonial that will uh, you know talk to the value of whatever it is that you're asking them to do. So if you're asking them to sign up for a newsletter. Somebody uh, testimonial would talk about, you know, the, the great value and benefits they got from the newsletter, right? So, uh, or whatever it is, or your service, if it's you want somebody to hire you. Uh, number five, a great way uh, to also increase your website's conversion rate is to clearly state the benefits of your product and service. Remember, at the end of the day, the client is really, it's about what's in it for me. They want to know you know, how is this going to help me? How is it going to solve my problem? And uh, so that's what you want to make sure that you clearly uh, state the benefits to the client of, of the products and service. And don't just assume they know, right? Uh, you know, everybody needs a website, but why? You know what I mean? So, you know, it, pretty much everybody does know that, but, you know, tell them why or whatever the case may be. Just be really clear about the benefits to your products and service. And number six, pay careful attention to your headlines. You want headlines that catch people's attention and speak to their need. You know what I mean? Like I was talking earlier about the ads, you know, having an attraction marketing device. So uh, if, you know, if, if it's something that is going to resonate with someone, you want, which, you know, again, I want to try to stay on the topic, but um, you, we have things that's called thought zone messaging, Right. And the thought zone messaging is, again, I'll, I'll use the one with the real estate. Four, four, four things you need to know before you hire a real estate agent. Now, me, I'm not looking to hire a real estate agent, so I'm going to go right past that. I'm going to take no action if I see that. But somebody who's thinking about buying a house, selling a house, downsizing, upselling, maybe a parent is moving into assisted facility and, and they're going to have to take care of, you know, um, selling their house or whatever the case may be, or maybe they just want information, that would be something that would trigger a thought. So uh, that's thoughts on messaging. So, hey, Claire, uh, excuse me, pay uh, careful attention to your headlines because you want to make sure that whoever will benefit from that product or service or the course of action you want them to take uh, you know, make sure it resonates with them. And, and please remember, it's about them. 
So uh, don't stay, I, or, you know, talk about them. Um, keep conversion elements above the fold, meaning you, when they get to your website, you don't want them to have to scroll down, 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 even if it's just a landing page, right? Uh, so have them, you know, this is the second one. The first one might be the ad. Whatever it is, it takes them to the second one. So make sure that you, uh, or try your best to make sure that as soon as they hit your site or as soon as they see that landing page, the um, the course of action you want them to take, that sign-up sheet, is uh, right there. It's clearly visible uh, because if they have to scroll down, and if, what if they don't scroll down, right? You might have had uh, 40 people hit your website, right? But, you know, they didn't know. They weren't interested. You know, they just didn't see the sign-up sheet, okay? So, um Eight, use video to humanize your brand. Uh, video's huge. I mean, video's taken over. By 2020, 2021, uh, it's been said by Google, Facebook, and uh, some other giants in the industry that 70% of all searches on Google will result with videos, right? So if somebody will type something in, and instead of just a blog article that will come up, there'll be a video that will come up. So I've been telling all my clients already to get ahead of the game and start using the videos uh, right now. And um, so that's super important. So start using video. Um, And then also create dedicated landing pages. If you're going to use like for pay-per-click or AdWords or any other form of uh, PPC or anything, make sure you're sending those visitors to a dedicated page, not to your home page. Because if they, if they go to your home page, right, then they have to find something else. You know, it, it's requiring another click or another, they have to search for something. You want them to increase your conversion rates. You, you want that funnel. You want that course of action from when they're going from point A to point B to point C to be clear. So it will help you to increase your conversions to cut out uh, any confusion there. So number 10. I would say, and again, <laughs> these are in no exact order. They're just written down that uh, I've taken notes. I'm actually reading them. Um, <clears throat> include uh, subscriber or social media follower accounts. Now, I don't do this myself, but I've seen several other people do it, and it kind of conveys social proof. I mean, if you have 300 people following you, it's probably not something you want to do. But if you have 17,000 or, you know, 6,000, 17,000, 28,000, you know, uh, 40,000, 50,000. You know, it it means that they're not alone. They're they're not inventing the wheel, that other people, significant amounts of other people are following you because you have value, right? And uh, if they didn't, they'd just unsubscribe or or they'd start unfollowing you, right? So, uh, and number 11, a call to action. And and it's kind of like... You know, we've talked all this stuff relates to having a call to action, right? So I'm just going to call it out there straight, though. But a lot of this can, you know, plays right to a call to action. So incorporate strong calls to action in every piece of content on your site. So on every page, you know, uh, or I, on every page of my website, we have a contact us form you know, uh, submit for a quote or or request more information, you know what I mean? So every single page has one, and it's all above the fold, and it's clearly visible. So they come to the page, they see whatever it is that brought them to the page that they were interested in, and right next to that is a form for them to contact us with our phone number and email as well. So if they don't want to fill out the form but they want to call us, call. Um, Then you can also recommend related products or other services. So if they're on one page and you're talking about something, you might have, and sometimes it's called an uh, upsell or a downsell. And if you don't have something, but if you had like an add-on service or somebody in your industry who does something that serves the people that you are serving, uh, you could create some type of a referral program. So if if they're coming to your site for something, and uh, maybe it's not 100% what they need, but you have a link there to whether, you know, maybe it's a lawyer or a CPA or a dentist or whatever the case may be, a carpenter, um, you know, whatever the case may be, 
um, try to keep them industry, you know, like in a silo. So whatever your industry is, like in my industry, we do websites, uh, search engine optimization, we do website conversions, we do all this stuff. But if I didn't do, let's say I didn't do websites and I only did SEO, I might have a link to a website person on my site, which I would have some type of a commission set up with that person. So that would be something that you might want to incorporate too, because it gives you another way to monetize, you know, serve, but also monetize your, your base. Um, and then lose the hype, you know, just most consumers are too savvy to fall for the hype based content writing. So lose the hype, focus instead on writing clear, compelling copy that helps your visitors make a, a purchasing decision or, or, or the transition to, at least getting more information or, you know, continuing down that path that you set out for them in your funnel, right? And then always try it, test it, and tweak it, you know, test variations of your call to button action. I mean, buy now or order now. <clears throat> Maybe instead of saying buy now, put down enroll now or order now, and it would be or, or enroll now. Uh, but try different ones and, and try different colors, as crazy as it sounds. I know some people have the buttons that are red. And, excuse me, and as soon as somebody, it, that the buttons are red, and as soon as somebody clicks on the button, it turns green because everybody knows green is go, right? And uh, they don't, uh, you know, they'll never go from green back to red, right? So uh, you, you want to make sure that when they click the button to buy now and it takes them to a form to fill out, that the button switches to green. So there's all sorts of, a uh, little different tricks here, but try different ones and, and, and see what works for you, all right? Uh, tell visitors ex- exactly what they're going to get. You know, be clear. You know, it goes back to what we just talked about a couple minutes ago about writing compelling copy and, and what's in it for me to the potential buyer, right? So um, visitors, you know, provide visitors with absolutely everything they need to know about your product. You know, what are the features and the benefits? What does it look like? What are the possible uses? Who will benefit from it? And how will it be delivered? Now, I'm not saying, you know, write an entire book, but you could certainly sum up a lot of that in, you know, two or three sentences. And a good example of that would be like Amazon. Amazon, I I just ordered something the other day and uh, this big whiteboard that I can write on. And right away, it it gave me options. It came right down and said, people who've ordered this have also ordered this or have ordered that, right? So um, in books that I've read, you know, up come other books that are on similar topics. So, you know, have something like that. And then here's a really big one. Include a clear value proposition. Tell potential buyers what's special about your product and your service uh, and what's different, how it's different than everybody else. Because let's, let, let's be honest, I mean, whatever you're doing in the market, there's probably within 10 miles of you, probably 20 other people providing the same or similar services on a higher, on, on a high level. Meaning that, it, you know, if, if like we do websites and, and SEO, yes, there are other website and SEO companies. So when you are including a clear value proposition, you're letting potential visitors know what sets you apart from the other people. Why should they do business with you opposed to others? And, and you don't talk bad about other people, but you basically you, you be clear about what separates you from them. And, again, it goes back to, like, even just having a couple of testimonials uh, there from people. It's, you know, if these people are, say you're in, like, I live in Bill Ricker, Mass. So say there was somebody... Uh, in, in, in a page that I was going to create specifically for Bill Ricker people. So maybe if I had somebody in this area who I had worked with before and they gave me a testimonial, but their name was well recognized. You know what I mean? So if you have a testimonial from somebody who has a name recognition, that also conveys kind of like social proof, right? Um, and then also give your visitors tunnel vision. Kind of like goes back so what I said earlier, and on some of it, it might sound like I'm going to contradict some of it, but when creating a landing page, remove anything else that could potentially distract your visitors, such as a navigation bar or other call to actions. 
your landing page should be 100% about getting your visitors to take one specific action, all right? Um, so, and, and there is some confusion. You know, every page on your website is, in fact, a landing page, right? A landing page is just a page that somebody lands on from somewhere. So if they saw an ad somewhere and they go there. So you can have a whole landing page, um, that's just a landing page, like a funnel. But just be clear that your uh, that a landing page, that every single page on your website is also a landing page. So uh, in the second section, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit more and, and maybe a, a little clearer on um, website conversions. I mean, this is all uh, pretty important stuff for people to uh, increase. You know, how many people you serve at the end of the day. Uh, the more people you serve, uh, the more, you know, their lives will get better, whether it's their business or whatever else that that, that they're doing, depending upon your industry. But it, it also means the more testimonials you'll get, the more clients you'll get, and, and, and the more money you'll make. Let's be real. I mean, at the end of the day, it's about money, too, right? You serve, but uh, you also, you got to eat, too, right? So uh, I think uh, in the next section, I'm going to talk uh, more about um website conversions, and also designs, you know, how you can actually physically design your website. So from the very beginning, or if you haven't done these designs, you can then go back and do the designs uh, to uh, increase your conversions, All right? So uh, you've been listening to uh, Ron Kuming from RCS Online Solutions, where we help business owners and entrepreneurs attract, convert, and retain their ideal customers and clients to achieve even greater success using various internet marketing techniques and methods. And if you need a consultation or you want to know about your call to actions or any of these with your website conversions or you want you need a new website, whatever the case may be, feel free to reach out to me at Ron, R-O-N, at R-C-S, online solutions.com.